Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Um, I'm Muhammad Hassan al -Haq. I'm going to present uh, uh, a paper on matching game. But before that, I would like to grab this opportunity to thank Professor Dr. Quint uh, for giving me this chance to talk about this particular topic. Um, okay. So today I'm going to talk about uh, a matching game and its properties. We'd like to see uh, what is a matching game and we'll go uh, as deep as possible into some basic properties of that as well. Okay, so first of all, we'd like to see how we can define a matching game in general and when and why uh, economists or game theorists use this matching game. Then we'll see some uh, examples or rather the types of matching game, how many types of matching game we can see uh, as a game theorist. And then, as I said before, we'll see some basic properties and try to go deep into that. Um, later on, we'll try and draw a conclusion of that uh, discussion. Uh, we'll be having till then. Okay, so here is how uh, a matching game could look like. That means if we have a bunch of people, they may or may not have a distinct choice um, from a couple of outcomes, um, which is an offer, of course. For example, if we have uh, five people, A, B, C, and D, uh, they, they might have their own preferences from the six possible outcomes, whatever the object is. It, it could be um, um, a human being, it could be an object, and so on. For example, A might have a choice of uh, one over three, that means he, he will choose the object one, the first object, uh, um, over the third object, whereas we can see E has only one preference, which is number two, that means he will choose the second object any day, any time, and so on. So that means when we are working with a couple of people with uh, uh, a people of different mindsets will see different choice list as well. And from this, we'll try to make a matching which will give each one their best possible outcome. And then we'll try to see that whether it actually makes sense or not. Okay, now when does economists use this matching game? So as you can see, here the utilities are not really transferable. So matching theory has become a leading area in economic theory in order to deal with the difficulties presented by the indivisibilities in the allocation of resources. Okay, so that means when we have a non-transferable utility, uh, game theorist, uh, think that this matching game is really an impactful tool. Okay, now let's see how many types of matching uh, we'll discuss today, or rather we'll see today. So first of all, um, we can have a two-sided matching, like a men and women marriage game, um, where each man has his own preference of women uh, and vice versa for women as well. Or it could be a college and student game where students uh, have a choice of college and the college 
has also a choice of students uh, whom they want to uh, admit. Okay, uh, so as you can see, we may have one to one matching like a men and women game, or we may have many to one matching like a college and student game. And the other type of matching we'll discuss today uh, that's a three sided matching. Uh, it could be uh, like a men, women, and children. That means uh, we want to match, we want to have a threesome matching. We want to match three things each man with his preferred women and children, something like that. Um, today, we'll try to uh, go deep into two sided matching, but of course, we'll see one example of three sided matching as well. Okay, now uh, let's see how we can uh, distinguish uh, a matching. That means after we do a job of a matchmaker, we want to check whether it actually makes sense or not. So we define, or rather we say we have two types of matching uh, by this criterion. One could be stable matching. That means it actually makes sense mathematically, or as a game theorist, we can actually see that it is uh, doing our job without uh, doing any harm to the basic definition and properties. And clearly, a matching with, which doesn't really do the job will say it's unstable. So let's go and see how we can define a stable matching. So a matching is stable if it's not blocked by an individual pair or any, uh, by an individual or any pair of agents. So as you can see, we have two things to discuss here. That means a blocking pair and the individual erasure. Okay, so let us quickly go back to the definition of blocking pair. What is a blocking pair? So for example, if you make a matching and then you can see that there is one player which could try to uh, block the matching by saying, hey, that if you want to come with me, both of us will get a better outcome, something like that. That means uh, he could actually do a job of an arbitrator, uh, try to uh, make the divorce happen, and then uh, make a matching of himself for a better outcome, something like that, okay? And then what is individually rational? So we say the matching is individually rational if each agent is acceptable to his or her mate. That is, a matching is individually rational if it's not really blocked by any individual agent. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we uh, do a matching, uh, or rather if we have a matching and then we want to check whether it gives us a stable matching or not. Okay. So let's try this first. For example, if we go for a three-sided matching, that means men, women, and child, where the preference list is given below, as you can see, uh, like for uh, men one, his first choice is to have women one and child three. His second choice is women two and child three and so on. Similarly for women one, as you can see the choice is uh, men one and child one. And for child one, as you can see, uh, its preference is to have men one and women one. Okay, now 
let's check what happens um, if we try to um, make matchings whether it gives us uh, stability or not okay so from this preference list if we make matchings we'll see there is no real stable matching in this example uh, for example if we take uh, uh, one matching like say for men one uh, if we say uh, if we get a better family than men one or men one women one and children one we will see that uh, it's actually unstable Sa same goes for men two and women two uh, for a family of men two women two and children or other child two so whichever matching we take from this um, we'll see uh, uh, it's unstable for example any matching that does not contain men one women one and child one it's actually either blocked by uh, itself that means the the matching of men one women one and child one or it's actually unstable as we have uh, discussed a uh, um, couple of minutes back that means uh, it could have a better family uh, than this one right so for each matching if you try if we try um, we can actually see that there is no real stable matching in this choice of uh, list or, or in this list of choice rather okay now let's see what happens uh, if we go for a roommate problem so for a roommate problem um, a person a has a choice list of b c d that means he he chooses b over c and d uh, similarly, uh, men uh, B chooses C over A and D. For C, the order is A, B, and D. That means he chooses or he likes guy A, then um, the guy B, and he likes guy B, then the guy D. Okay, so that's the choice list we have. Now, if we want to make matching from this, let's see what happens. So, as you can see, person D is the last choice of everyone else, right? And um, we can see that no one is actually the first choice of two different people. That means each of the other people is someone else's first choice. So, so clearly our intuition says that no matching will be stable. Uh, because any matching must pair someone with agent D, as you can see, because we have four people here, okay, and clearly someone will be able to find another person to make a blocking pair, right? So that means after this discussion, we can reach a conclusion that if we do a matching, this might not be stable. Now the question could be, then what's the uh, basic requirement for a matching to be stable? Or how can we say that a matching is going to be stable, right? So thank God, uh, thanks to Gale and Shapley, they have discovered one algorithm, uh, how to find a stable matching. And they have also said or described when we can kind of guarantee a stable matching. So let us quickly see what Gale and Shapley said. So the theorem is a stable matching exists for every marriage market. That means if we 
do a one-to-one -one matching for marriage. That means if we try to match one woman with one man, that means we will only allow one-to-one -one matching between one man and women. Gail and Shapley said, we're definitely going to have a stable matching. Okay. So, now we want to see uh, what's the algorithm for that. Okay. So, the algorithm is, We'll start with each man proposes to his favorite woman, that is to the first woman on his preference list of acceptable women, okay? Each woman rejects the proposal of any man who is unacceptable to her. And each woman who receives more than one proposal rejects all, but her most preferred of this. That means uh, if one particular woman um, is actually in the first uh, choice of more than one man, then uh, definitely she will get more than one proposal, right? But uh, she will tentatively accept only one which is actually first amongst the proposals she has got, uh, uh, which is first in her preference list, and she will actually reject the others. So after that, um, at any step, any man who, who was rejected at the previous step will actually, uh, the guy will actually propose uh, women, which is, or, or rather who is next in his uh, list. That means to his most preferred woman among those who have not yet rejected him, so long as there remains an unaccept or rather acceptable woman to whom he has not yet proposed. And each woman receiving proposals rejects any from uh, any uh, proposal from uh, the unacceptable man and also rejects all but her most preferred among the group consisting of new proposals uh, together with any man she may have kept engaged from the previous step. Now the question could be when this algorithm will actually or eventually stop. So the algorithm stops after any step in which no man is rejected. At this point, every man is either engaged to some women or has been rejected by every woman uh, on his list of acceptable women. So that means uh, we'll say that this guy will remain single, okay? So by this, uh, uh, we can have a stable matching. Now, let's see one example and see how it actually ensures that uh, this algorithm will give us a stable matching and we'll, we call this algorithm the deferred acceptance procedure. In short, we'll say that it's the DAP method. Okay, so let's see one example of this DAP method, how we can use this algorithm to find a stable matching. Okay, so we have this list of preference for five men and four women and we have this uh, preference order that means for example if we take men three his uh, order of choice is four three one two that means he likes women four uh, the most then women three then women one and she likes uh, women two the least and so on. So we can actually uh, see the uh, choice list here. So first of all, as per our algorithm, men one, or rather man one, four and five, 
will propose to women one, and men two and three will propose to women four. So clearly, as you can see, women one uh, gets more than one proposal. Our algorithm says she will accept only one, which is actually um, the first amongst the proposals she has got, and she will reject the other. Uh, other two, in fact, precisely on this uh, particular example. So she will reject men, men four and five, and she will tentatively accept men one. She'll keep men one engaged for a while at least. And similarly, women four uh, will reject men three, but she will keep men two or man two engaged. Now, uh, as man two and man one uh, have been engaged, now men three, four, and five will propose to their second choice. So that means man three, as you can see from their choice list, man three will propose woman three, man four will propose woman four, and man five will propose woman two. Now, women four will reject man two and keep man four. Okay. And last, we can see uh, man two proposes to his uh, second choice, uh, W2, who rejects man five and keeps man two engaged. Now, man five proposes to his third choice, uh, which is woman four, who rejects now, who now rejects man five and continue, continues with man four, since man five has been rejected by every woman on its list of acceptable women. We say that this guy will stay single. That is, uh, he's actually matched with himself. So finally, the matching we'll have is, um, it's obviously uh, the matching for man optimal because we have started with man proposing uh, uh, women. So it's a man optimal matching so we'll say the stable matching after following this algorithm we've got is man one with women one man two with women two man three with women three man four with women four and man five will remain single so this is our stable matching And similarly, if we follow the DAP algorithm again, oops, uh, we'll see uh, for women, uh, the stable matching, if we just follow the algorithm for women, that means now we'll start women uh, with, with women uh, who will propose to men and run this algorithm, we'll get another stable matching, which will give us uh, men one now will be matched with women four. Men two now will be matched with women one. Men three will be matched with women two. And men four will be matched with women three. Whereas again, men five will remain single. Now the question could be why uh, we can see one man is uh, staying single all the time. You can clearly eyeball that, that we have one more man than the women. That means we have four women and five men. So clearly our intuition should say uh, one man will stay single all the time. Okay. Now, let us go uh, and see a couple of propositions. Um, and let's see what happens, um, or rather how we can use these propositions 
in our course. Okay. So, first of all, our first proposition we have is if mu prime is a matching, then mu prime is stable under P of mu if and only if mu prime is stable under the original preference and mu is actually greater or equal uh, mu prime for men. That means men will choose the matching mu at least as good as mu prime. Now the question could be what is this P of mu? So the P of mu is the profile of reduced lists where mu is a stable matching. Okay. Here we'll actually have a two-sided proof. That means uh, we'll first prove that uh, mu prime is stable under um, P of mu. And then we'll show the other way, in the other direction. Okay, so let's say uh, mu prime is stable under the reduced list, that means P of mu. Uh, then uh, mu of M, that means the matching for men is the first entry of the reduced list of men and mu of w that means the matching for women is the last entry for or, or rather of the reduced list of women and if we are uh, trying to uh, prove that for men uh, mu is actually greater or equal mu prime that means men will prefer the, the matching mu at least as good as mu prime if not better because we have greater or equal that means men likes the matching mu at least uh, uh, as good as uh, mu prime so we can actually uh, satisfy this by our previous assumption now if uh, the matching M and W blocks this mu prime under the original preference, then, then we'll have a matching for women, um, mu prime and mu. Now men will actually prefer the matching uh, mu prime over the mu. That means he will actually like that matching more. At least, at least as good as that. Since uh, uh, the matching mu prime is actually uh, an element of that reduced list. And of course, mu, mu of W, that means the matching of women is the least preferred under the re reduced list, as we have said a couple of minutes back. So uh, clearly it follows uh, from that uh, that uh, the matching for men is actually uh, uh, greater uh, than the choice of women, okay? Now, W is acceptable to M, that means women, uh, W, we, we, we are uh, denoting this by W, it's actually acceptable to uh, the men M, under the reduced list of P of mu, and M is acceptable to W under the reduced uh, list of uh, women, which means this MW blocks mu prime under the reduced list uh, P of mu, which is a contradiction. So that shows that uh, this has to be true, right? That means. That means uh, uh, we can't really have uh, a preference uh, uh, like the way we try to set up. 
Okay, uh, that's one sided proof is done. Now for the other side, uh, if mu prime is stable under the original preference, um, and uh, for men, uh, they actually like the uh, matching mu at least as good as mu prime, then we say the matching mu prime is actually an element of the reduced list, and the matching mu prime for women is also an element of the reduced list for women. So clearly, the proof follows from that. So next up, we have proposition, uh, another proposition, which says, Uh, if P of mu is a profile of reduced lists, and then if it contains at most one acceptable women for all men in M, where M is uh, for men, uh, the set of men, then the matching mu is the women optimal stable matching. Okay? And this is actually, uh, we can actually get it immediately from the fact that the matching for men uh, uh, preferred by the women is the last entry uh, uh, in the reduced list of men for all men in M. So this is actually uh, quite straightforward from that, okay? Next, the next proposition we, we want to see is, again, uh, P of mu is the profile of reduced lists. And now, we have a cycle for P of mu, and it's only possible, uh, it's possible if and only if uh, the reduced list for men has more than one acceptable woman for some M. Now the question could be, uh, what is a cycle? So we say uh, if a set of men from A1 to AR is a cycle for some profile of reduced list uh, P of mu, if for I equals one to R minus one, the second woman in P of mu for A of I is actually the matching mu A of I plus one. That means it's the first woman in the uh, reduced list for A of I plus one. And the second woman is actually the first woman for the reduced list of A1, okay? Now, let's see what we can see from this proposition. So let's say uh, P of mu has more than one acceptable woman. That means the reduced list for men has more than one acceptable women. So by this proposition, uh, what you can get is there is some man who generates a cycle, right? So we can see one example for that. So uh, if we have uh, the following preference list, like say men one has the choice of women one, two, and three, that means he likes women one the most, then women two, and then women three. For men two, the list is women two and one. And for men three, it's women three, then women two. And for women one, we say the choice of list is men two and men one. For women two, it will, it's in this order, three, one, and two. That means she likes men three the most, then men one, and men two the least. And women three likes men one over men three. So if we have this choice of list, if we try 
to match these people will actually get a cycling matching under the reduced list P of mu, where mu is of course um, a stable match. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to our next proposition. And this says uh, if mu prime is a cyclic matching under P of mu, then mu prime is actually stable under the original preference as well. So previously, in, in our previous proposition, we have seen that for uh, more than one acceptable women in the reduced list of men, we'll get a, a cyclic matching under that reduced list. Now we want to say, using this proposition, that that matching will also be stable under the original preference, okay? So uh, let's say uh, that is actually not stable. Let's say we have, that means we want to prove it by contradiction. Let's say we have a blocking pair, that means mu prime is actually not stable, that means, or rather, in other words, we'll say, mu prime is unstable, that means we have a blocking pair somewhere in between. Let's say that's M and W, the blocking pair, which is making this mu prime unstable. And let's say we have a cycle associated with mu prime, of course, which we assume. So if we take, uh, uh, if, we, if we have that blocking pair, men and women, uh, the, let's say the pair is M and W, M is definitely a par of uh, that cycle. Otherwise, M is matched to his first choice under mu prime. And if that's the case, then, men, uh, then M and W is no way a blocking pair, right? Similarly, uh, uh, if uh, W uh, prefers um, the matching mu prime and mu prime is men's second choice, we'll see W actually prefers uh, the matching mu prime to M because M is a last choice, which is also uh, the necessary contradiction we're looking for. So clearly mu prime is stable under the original preference, okay? Next, uh, and perhaps the last proposition we want to see is when this algorithm stops. So we say that uh, the algorithm stops at step T if and only if we obtain only one profile of reduced lists in this step and the men's lists of accept acceptable women have at most one women, okay? So that means uh, if the algorithm stops at step T, this means that every profile of reduced lists obtained at this step has no cycle. Now, why is that? Clearly, because if we, uh, have a reduced list uh, with uh, a cycle, then the algorithm will actually keep going on. So if it stops at step T, that means at that step, we don't have any cycle uh, for the reduced list we have in our hands, okay? And then they have at most one acceptable women in the men's list as well, clearly because uh, uh, in one of the proposition, uh, we said that there is a cycle under the reduced list if and only if uh, the, for the reduced list of men, we have more than one acceptable women, right? And on the other hand, uh, we'll say that uh, the reduced list for men 
contains at most one acceptable women, then we say then uh, that the matching mu is actually women optimal stable matching for uh, the entire matching program. We had this proposition as well. A couple of minutes back, we actually uh, proved this proposition. So uh, it clearly follows uh, from this uh, proposition uh, that the men optimal matching under each one of these profiles must be the women optimal matching under the original preference. That means all these profiles must be the same. Okay, so that's it. That's what I have. Uh, so after this discussion, we can come to a conclusion that if we do a matchmaker's job, that means if we have a matching in our hands, it may or may not be stable. Um, it could be uh, a two-sided matching. It could be a one, uh, th or rather three-sided matching. It could be a uh, one-to-one -one matching. It could be a many-to-one -one matching. Um, but at the end, it will be stable if and only if, or rather we can guarantee that we have a stable matching if that's a marriage matching. We can guarantee that, that it's going to be stable. And again, thanks to Gail and Shapley for that uh, algorithm of DAP. And uh, finally, uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching this. Uh, I hope it was convincing enough. And uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Quint again uh, for giving me this opportunity. It was a great pleasure and uh, I'd like to take, uh, or I'd like to say that I'm honored and privileged uh, to have worked with you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you everyone.